wise man. All right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have done it without. Um, impact in youth development, it's, it's really my story again. I'm going to try to be as cheesy and as, as corny as um, Yasmin because I think it is important to be cheesy and corny. <laughs> um, basically, I think some of you may know my life story, uh, but just to let you know that I grew up in Gay uh, I had La Vie en Rose. Does anybody speak French? Like a what? La Vie en Rose. And it was a good life, although I did not have as handsome a teacher as I did then. Um, but what it gave me was the sort of environment that any, any child would have dreamed of. They empowered me, uh, they gave me strength, and they realized that I had strengths and flaws both at the same time. And they embraced that. And I was very, very thankful. I was actually living in a, in a, in a bubble of my own. We were very protected. Uh, we, were, we were all together you know, different religions, different nationalities, but that did not matter. And a lot of my friends are still friends today. Because um, we're, you know, great like that. We, I mean, it's been 28 years, and we're friends. So it has to, it has to mean something. But then I reached a point in time where I felt flat on my face, and I came back to miss him. So my bubble was. I was no longer protected by this environment. Instead, I was alien in my own home country. Uh, it was really odd. It wasn't because, it was just people understood me differently. We shared the same values. The way I presented it was slightly different. And I don't blame anybody for that. It was, it, and, and I'm naturally very shy. I really am very, very shy. Very shy. <laughs> I I would I hate being on stage to tell you the truth. So it really helps that this space is really dark. Thanks for kissing. And um, it was horrendous because I began to retreat. I was a, I was not the Nini that I was before. I was an, I was a, I, I disappeared. And it was only because I put myself there. I put myself on this island because I thought people did not ex ex uh, accept me the way I was. I had rosy cheeks and I was always happy. So what's wrong with this? Okay. I didn't realize that uh, I actually felt too privileged. You know, who was I to actually go to Paris and live a life like that? It's not fair. I always perceived it to be that. Oh, you be privileged. Forgive that ease. You know? I really felt bad about that, but that was my mistake. Because the thing is, I had skills to offer. And this is what I realized things that I had to offer was, I was actually forced to take, uh, to take over this organization and to be it. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea, but they said, hey, me, take over. You know? And I had to actually, um, a lot of our beneficiaries, a lot of our beneficiaries were the underprivileged. And I had to go there uh, almost every week. And one of the things that I did was actually teach. French. I taught French to the end of the village. They said, what in the world are you doing with French in the middle of a home? But it's really not about French. It's about telling them that it is possible that you can actually learn a different language. And it doesn't matter that given those choices and opportunities that I had as a child, you are able to do a lot of things. And you are allowed to do a lot of things in, in the best possible manner. And that is the sort of feeling I wanted other people to, to get as well. You know, like you get that twinkle in your eye, and like, you're in love. I wanted to spread that to as many, many, many children and as many youth as possible. It was, you know, no more of this drowning in my own sorrows, being sorry for myself, mm -hmm, I was privileged. Enough of that. You all have things to offer, whether you are from the from whatever backgrounds, as long as you're giving choice and opportunities. Uh, this is based on one of the assessments where we, was, we assess them and we observe these children through K, through K. There are many ways of assessing people, there are many ways of teaching, and using K was one of them. So there's hope. There's hope for me. Yes. And, I, and I truly believe there's hope for everybody. We already have 
always have to keep faith that faith alive. And I realize now that a lot of the things, you know, you have to take it's a journey. Life is a journey and it's, it's about you embracing it. I, there were a lot of mistakes that I did, many mistakes, but they are, they are the things that actually form me. So I have to be able to accept those mistakes as well, and you should too. Please do not talk to Nas, he knows who makes noise. Ah, 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 ah. So what is Marapa? Does anybody know about Marapa? Except for Malo? Yes, no? Yes. yes? Yes. Those who say yes, except for Yasmin. <laughs> what do you know of it? Anybody? Nothing? Apart from what's written here? <laughs> but basically, our mission is to develop independent youth uh, through uh, well rounded booster youth by giving them choice and opportunity. I want, like I said, everyone to feel the sort of feeling that you get personally being selfless by somewhat being selfish. You give a part of yourself to somebody else. Uh, one of the things is, of course, empowerment. And with empowerment, what youth like is inclusion and policy. We want to have our voices heard. Am I not right? Woo! <laughs> I only hear the old fast voice. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it is about you being involved in policy making and these are the sort of things that my friend would like to ensure. The other thing is of course that while you raise all these issues and while you have all these ideas, that it has to be driven by you. So you cannot say in the end, don't do anything up. Which I think those, this is why we're participating in this sort of events by UKC. But an impact we feel is something that is, is, is a very good platform. The second thing is, of course, while the youth are driving all this, we also need community engagement. If we don't have community engagement, a lot of initiatives will fall flat. It will not be driven more sustainably. So your parents, your teachers, your lecturers, everyone has to be involved. Otherwise, it doesn't go very far. And then the next thing you know, you have to go to the next generation, and you will have like only one little generation X, Z, you know? <laughs> So everyone has to be engaged. Support, obviously with your development, it comes with mental support so that you're not insane. What I mean is of course we provide you with additional skill sets we feel we have to complement whatever that you're doing. We have project management, we have media management, how you manage media, how you manage crazy folks like us. Um, uh, even the media. Uh, emotionally, of course, we don't give counseling, but we, have, we support you in the sort of things. In, how do you achieve your dreams? You don't know how. Okay, but we'll just facilitate that process. We won't necessarily tell you exactly or A to somebody Z how to do it, but we'll tell you this other stuff and guide you. We'll push you a little. And of course, financial. Who doesn't like the little financial support? Right? <laughs> but I'm going to say that something because we are not a foundation in our eh? At the end of the day, a lot of the initiatives that we do has to be pushed by the, the youth themselves. So I'm looking at you all, although in darkness, I can make up quite places. You guys are the ones who have to drive it. Because, see, get here at the end, the London Air Force. What about everybody else? And exactly, these are our heroes. These are the, one, the guys, including you guys, who are fueling us. This is our food. This is our food for what we, we, we have to think about you guys. And we are only as strong as you guys are. Okay? So, I mean, these are some of the people who, uh, some of the youth who submitted for one of our programs, for Chita Chita uh, But there are many, many others. The Cypress, the UKC, the people who are actually doing a lot of work. work. And we are only supporting them just a little bit. Okay? So, we give them opportunities so that we can create collective impact because that's the only thing that can last. But of course, with Generation Y, I'm also concerned. I have kids, and at the end of the day, you can't even have a girl and I do So, it's a big responsibility thinking after my kids because they will be making a lot of noise. You say, you guys got a what are you guys doing for, my, for the next generation? So, 
the alarming thing is there are a lot of organizations coming to Mara Prime complaining about the youth. They are complaining about the youth. And it's very sad. I don't want to, you know, when, when you know, people come frequently telling you, oh, you know, they're good for nothing. Okay, not good for nothing. We have very, very good stories. But these stories need to be highlighted a lot more frequently. We need more chair projects highlighted. We need more projects. Good, good stuff to be highlighted. Okay? And this doesn't necessarily have to be highlighted in the media. Do it within your own respective communities. Uh, other things include our personal experiences is we have uh, interview sessions. We have six interview sessions in one day. None of them show up. None of them called to say I'm sorry. None of them informed us that they couldn't make it. And this is not the only we are not the only ones facing this. Maybe maybe us because you know we're an NGO. This is a different thing. But there are increasingly a lot of people are saying to some generation why I hope and I really hope that you guys prove them wrong. Let up. No, no. Let up. So my personal appeal is you have to help us. You have to meet us halfway. Even better, please walk with us. If you feel and you believe in the, in the values that we need, are these your shared values? Do you believe in your development? Then we want to see it. We want to be able to talk to you. I believe you can see the views in your development. Otherwise, they're going to be with us. So, you know, we, we support all of you. So if, if I can actually get more youth to do stuff on their own, and more youth to highlight the good stuff that they do, the, the positive goodness that there is already around them, it's just that people don't talk about it. I mean, you when you look at it, what do you think this number represents? Sorry? <laughs> Malaysian population around 30 million? No? Almost. Almost. Almost, yes. It is Malaysia's almost population. Uh, it was 26 million before, it has, I think, increased to 30 million. And guess what? You. Okay. Just 11 million with regards to that. Imagine that. So there's 200 here, look at everybody else, huh? So you guys are the great gods who actually woke up on Saturday morning and sacrifice your time to actually be with us. Thank you very much. So 11 million to 13 million. What's the ratio then? One third. Three, one three. So a lot of us are actually young, and some of us are pasan young. Like, can you pasan young? Pas, pas. <laughs> But the thing is, imagine if each one of us, we reached out to just people around it, just three people. That's all. Collectively, we consciously went out to reach out to three different people. I think we'll solve poverty. There won't be any poverty in Malaysia and we'll have a museum. And that's actually the aim of Professor uh, Yunus uh, Imagine if we could do this. This is very simplistic. But is it impossible? You think it's impossible? No, it's not impossible actually. But we have to have that conscious effort. And it's not a short term thing. I'm going to help this group of families for one week. Do you think that's enough? No, it's not enough. It has to be continuous. It has to be conscious effort that lasts. That lasts a lot longer than you know your usual charity one of events. And it's something that us in our we have to consider also. We are looking at stakeholders. 
we're looking at policy makers to make sure that that policies are, are used to the advantage of uh, the future. Because right now, we're living because, you know, we, we have to live with the sins of our forefathers, whatever sins that they, they may be. But there is a way forward. And that way forward is to include even the old parts. Tak boleh shock sendiri saja youth youth. Even if it's youth now, we need to be able to reach out to the older parts. Because you will become old parts too, right? <coughs> uh, old parts. Oh, no. So, that, that will be my day. While we talk about youth, and while we are in the presence of such youthness, we have to be able to engage and to empathize with everybody and understand exactly where they're coming from. Because without which, we want to touch us we want to live in our own bubble. You know, and that bubble will burst. Maybe for a good reason. God gives us each own, our own design curriculum. Correct? We all go, go through a curriculum that's built for us. And I am the way I am now because of whatever that I've done. Unfortunately, I started a bit later. I started getting children first to realize, shoot, I need to do something. Okay? So don't wait till you get kids and say, shoot, I need to do something. Because it might be today. It might be. It's a little... I want to be able to hear this from all the old parts saying, wow, look at you. Changing the world and stuff. I want to see that, I want to hear that a lot more frequently. And I'm, and I'm actually not an advocate for youth development solely, I'm an advocate for positive action. Taking action positively and, and, and doing that change. And if you so choose to, consider social business. Does anybody know what social business is? No? No one knows social business? Uh, it's actually business, but instead of looking at it, uh, instead of it being very profit motivated, you are purpose driven. And then because you are able to provide a need, that eventually money will come in. But your main aim would be, for example, water sanitation or helping the poor. That would be your main aim. And you can actually make a business out of it. We're trying to professionalize NGOs specifically. Right now it's very charity oriented. We're always we are always running up again. We want to change that. We want to be able to provide a real service. And that real service is really, really required. So if you want to know more, we also have an event, sorry, commercial, in December, uh, from the 7th to the 9th, which will talk about youth in social businesses. So if you are interested, let us know. Okay. Who is me? Who is the party? Um, he's, like, he's actually my son. So he gives you that pose because you know, he gets it from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm seeing, I'm actually learning a lot about who I am through my children. I'm also learning about myself through what I give to other people. And that's the only way I understand who I am. It's not by sitting and, like, well, you, you can actually sit down and reflect on what you've done and all that and think about what you do through who you are. But it's really about what you give. So, with me, I'm actually still on that journey. I'm still youth person. So I'm still, I, I think there's a lot more that I can learn. There's a lot more that I can learn from you guys. Uh, and you, if you really are compelled to know more about me, just email me here, at Hey, 